In this video, I recap all the events of Servant Season 1. If you enjoy it, remember to like and subscribe to keep up with our episode-by-episode -episode breakdowns of Season 2. Enjoy the recap. On a rainy evening in Philadelphia, Leanne Grayson arrives at the Turner household. Dorothy Turner takes the new nanny on a tour of their home. As Leanne gets settled in her new bedroom, the couple discuss their first impressions. Sean thinks she's young, quiet, and weird. Dorothy likes the girl and worries about making a good impression. Sean gently reminds her that Leanne is staff. The next morning, the Turners get to know their new nanny. Leanne is an only child. Her long-term goals are to be happily married and raise children of her own someday. Leanne learns a little about Mr. Turner as well. Sean is a bon vivant, or a consulting chef. I'm sure you and Jericho will form an instant bond, Dorothy says to Leanne. Later that night, Sean notices Leanne praying at her bedside. Then, he stops in the nursery. He picks up a lifelike doll and carelessly lets it hit its head on the side of the crib. He holds it and cries. His sobbing falls on deaf ears through the baby monitor in the other room. The next morning, Leanne changes the doll's diaper, speaking to it as if it were a real child. Dorothy nervously prepares for work and to leave her son at home for the first time. She is a local newscaster. Once it's just Sean and Leanne, he explains the situation. The baby is a reborn doll. They lost their real child, Jericho, at 13 weeks when one day, he simply did not wake up. Dorothy had a full psychotic break, and this doll is the only thing that brought her back, something her unlicensed quack recommended. Only Dorothy's father, brother, and now Leanne, know that they lost Jericho. Leanne has no questions and continues treating the doll like a real child. While she is out taking it for a stroll, Sean snoops in her room, accidentally cutting himself on a cross she crafted. That night, he will find that same cross hanging over the doll's crib. Later, in the master bath, Mrs. Turner tends to her mastitis while Sean unsympathetically watches. He tells his wife that he is uncomfortable with how religious Leanne seems to be. On the other hand, Dorothy is already impressed with the nanny and thinks they're lucky to have her. The next day, Dorothy's brother Julian stops by to see Sean. He is disappointed to hear Sean's assessment that the nanny is not particularly hot. He is also unsurprised that Leanne is nonchalant about the fake baby. After all, she's getting cash and free accommodation without even having to change a diaper. Sean reminds Julian of Natalie's advice that everything remains normal around Dorothy. No sudden movements or changes. Julian reminds Sean that Natalie is not a doctor and he questions whether or not Dorothy will ever come back to her senses. That night, while Dorothy and Sean are out, Leanne snoops through Mrs. Turner's things tries on some of her jewelry, and uses the master bath. Later, Leanne finds Dorothy in the master bath and learns of her mastitis. Without prompting, she helps relieve the blockage. The next day, Leanne leaves for an errand and asks Sean to listen for Jericho. While she's out, Sean hears the sound of a baby cough over the monitor. He heads upstairs and in the baby's crib, for the first time since Jericho's death, he finds a living, breathing infant. That night, a taxi stops at the Turner home to drop off Dorothy. Before paying the driver, she freezes in place and loses awareness, until the cab driver's repeated requests wake her up. Dorothy is unfazed when she finds the living baby waiting for her and proceeds to feed it. In the kitchen, Sean demands to know from Leanne whose baby it is. It's your baby, she assures him, Jericho. Sean pays a visit to the nursery, and in frustration, yanks down Leanne's cross, then shoves it into the garbage disposal. The next morning, Sean gets a splinter as he walks on the floor barefoot. As he sands the floor in retribution, Leanne notices the missing cross. Later, Julian arrives, and Sean quietly sneaks him to the nursery, where he reveals the living baby. Sean recounts what happened, explaining how he suddenly found the child in place of the doll. Julian tells him they need to check if any missing babies have been reported in the area, so they can return the child to his family. Julian assures that he'll look into it and then heads to work. That night, Dorothy helps Sean remove more splinters that he somehow accumulated. After some light flirtation from his wife, Sean laments their dormant sex life. Meanwhile, Leanne makes another cross for Jericho. Dorothy's brother Julian arrives for dinner to celebrate his birthday. In private, Julian informs Sean that his PI friend Roscoe looked into missing babies, 
and found none that matched Jericho's description. Julian suggests they need to consider a future where Dorothy never wakes up, and for now, they need to keep up the charade, raising the baby as though he really is Jericho. Back upstairs, Julian suggests they invite Leanne to join them for dinner. Privately, he tells Sean he wants to meet this baby snatcher. As they eat the mussels Dorothy prepared, Sean comments that he literally can't taste them. Then he has a coughing fit and adds that he can't taste the wine either. As the fit worsens, Dorothy politely recommends Sean excuse himself. In the other room, he extracts a sharp piece of wood from his throat. He storms into the kitchen and breaks in half the offending wooden spoon, which splintered into Dorothy's sauce. Then he notices his wife frozen in front of the fridge. Julian joins them and Sean warns him not to touch Dorothy, or make any sudden movements. Sean asks Dorothy if she remembers what happened to Jericho. Then the child's crying wakes Dorothy from her stupor and she goes to comfort him. In the middle of the night, Sean sneaks outside to meet Julian and his PI friend Roscoe. They tell Sean that they've discovered little info on Leanne, so they are planning on taking a trip to her hometown in Wisconsin to see what they can uncover. However, they'll need a photo of her to show people. Sean looks for the photo attached to her resume, but it is gone. So he hatches a plan B, creepily snapping a photo of her sleeping. After the sun comes up, Sean begins prep for an event he's catering when his assistant Toby arrives. Toby will need to taste everything they prepare, as Sean explains his taste buds don't seem to be working. Once his eel delivery arrives, Leanne, Dorothy, and Jericho have joined them in the kitchen. Leanne watches in horror as Sean slams the eel on the counter, nails it to a board, and skins it, all while it continues to squirm. Why won't it stop, she asks, before fainting. Later, Sean gets a video call from Julian. He shows him Leanne's childhood home, severely damaged by a fire. Inside, he finds a cross on the wall, one that looks very familiar to Sean. That night, Sean and Dorothy decide to go out for a dinner date. First, Sean pays Toby extra to keep an eye on the house and Leanne. Before heading out, Sean and Dorothy share an intimate kiss while Leanne spies on them. Thinking she's alone, Leanne once again tries on some of Dorothy's jewelry and makeup. Downstairs, she's surprised to find Toby and invites him to have a drink with her. As they sip their wine, Leanne suggests they eat something. Toby digs through the fridge and Leanne picks up the last remaining living eel and slams its head on the counter. Toby sets two plates of hand-fried eel, but is interrupted by a knock at the door, where he finds Julian. Julian wishes him a good night and joins Leanne at the table. He attempts to intimidate her. If she's going to extort his sister, she'll have to go through him. Leanne cryptically asks if he was there that night. Julian leaves the table and she corners him, mimicking what she saw Dorothy do with Sean earlier. They're interrupted by Dorothy and Sean's return. Julian tells Sean he needs to show him something. He pulls up a video on his phone, which he and Roscoe filmed at a cemetery in Wisconsin. Sean watches as it reveals the graves of Stephen Grayson, Leanne's father, Laura Grayson, her mother, and finally, a gravestone for Leanne Grayson herself. They were all killed in a fire. Julian suggests the nanny must be an imposter who stole Leanne's identity. Before he leaves, the two wonder what she might want. Does she want money? Is this blackmail? How much does she really know? With no answers, Julian leaves. In an earlier, happier time, Sean's wife shows off her positive pregnancy test. They're going to name him Harry, which Sean writes on the test stick. In the present, he wakes to find a splinter on the back of his neck. Later that morning, Sean prepares lobster ice cream, though his ability to taste still eludes him. Later, while his wife is at work, he sneaks into Leanne's room and installs a camera in her wall. Dorothy returns and excitedly suggests she brings Jericho and Leanne with her to work the next day. Sean attempts to dissuade her. In the master bathroom, he continues saying that it's not the right time to share Jericho with the world. Finally, she relents and agrees. In the morning, Dorothy insists Sean break the news to Leanne that she'll be staying home, rather than visiting her at work. So, he bluntly tells Leanne, it's not happening. Later, Sean shares his latest findings with Julian. He shows camera footage of Leanne bringing Jericho to her room when she thinks Sean and Dorothy are asleep. Why would a nanny overstep like that? 
Sean theorizes that Leanne is the biological mother, and she found the Turners as a way to provide a good home for her son. Julian accuses Sean of wanting to keep the baby, and Sean responds, wouldn't you? Julian leaves as Leanne takes Jericho for a walk. Then, Sean watches Dorothy on TV, reporting in front of a courthouse. In the background, he notices Leanne holding the baby. When she arrives shortly after Dorothy, Sean confronts her. She claims she happened to see the crowds and decided to watch, but didn't want to bother Dorothy who looked busy. Sean is frustrated at her indiscretion, while his wife is just sorry she didn't know Leanne was there. When Mrs. Turner asks if that was her first time on television, Leanne lies. Yes, Dorothy. Later that night, Leanne stops in the kitchen for a snack. She tries some of the lobster ice cream as Sean confronts her about that morning. If this is going to work, you're going to have to trust that I know what's best for Dorothy and for the baby, he tells her. She promises she'd never do anything to hurt Jericho, and Sean tells her never to call him that. To Dorothy, yes, but not to him. Not ever. I thought you liked the name. Dorothy said you picked it out, Leanne responds. Sean tells her that it wasn't their first choice. He thinks of the drawer by their bed, full of pregnancy tests, each with another name. He tells Leanne about Dorothy's overactive immune system, which treated their unborn children as foreign entities. She killed them all. That's what she told herself, Sean explains. I don't want to put her through that again. So if there's a way, Leanne changes the subject, suggesting chocolate sauce for the lobster ice cream. This gives Sean an epiphany for how to properly serve the ice cream next time. Before Leanne leaves, he asks her, why us? I knew I'd be happy here, she responds. Once alone, Leanne grabs one of Dorothy's archived newscasts from March 11th, 2011. She watches Dorothy reporting from a children's beauty pageant. Dorothy briefly interviews one of the contestants, Leanne from Wisconsin. In the morning, Leanne finds Dorothy in a state of unawareness and wakes her. Leanne is left alone with Jericho as Dorothy is at work and Sean is pitching restaurants. After a walk with the baby, Leanne finds the front door open and hears someone in the house. She finds Toby working in the basement though he claims to have come in through the side door. He shows her a box of crickets, part of Sean's next culinary project. After hearing a knock at the front door, Leanne welcomes Wanda and her daughter Olivia into the house. Wanda claims to be a neighbor locked out of her home. As Leanne entertains the unexpected guests, she assures Toby everything is okay and he leaves. Wanda asks if Leanne can watch Olivia for a bit while she takes care of something. Before leaving, Wanda warns Leanne not to feed Olivia, as she is allergic to everything. During a game of hide-and-seek, Leanne happens across an old yellow onesie in the basement. Then, she hears a noise upstairs and finds Olivia, who claims to have seen a man run out of the house. Finally, Wendy returns and grabs her daughter. That night, Dorothy sends Leanne out of the house to pick up some coffee sponge cake. She returns, cake in hand, but learns it was simply a pretext for Dorothy and Sean to get some time alone in the bedroom. Disturbed by Mrs. Turner's manipulation of her, Leanne returns to her room and writes Dorothy's name next to a Bible verse before praying. The next morning, Dorothy finds a prominent cold sore above her lip. Later, Leanne visits the home she saw Wendy return to. However, a stranger answers the door. Wendy does not live there. In the Turner home, she again hears someone in the house and hides as the man sneaks out. She is unaware that this is Sean and Julian's P.I., Roscoe. Her odd day continues as Sean yanks the yellow onesie out of her hands, seemingly upset that Leanne found it. That night, Leanne finds a cricket in her tub. Then she overhears Julian in the kitchen trying to convince Sean to make things uncomfortable for her and drive her out of the house. Setting an example, Julian takes a label off a can of Leanne's favorite Campbell's soup and sticks it onto a can of dog food. She returns to her room and writes Sean's name next to a Bible verse, before praying again. The next morning, she wakes to a room full of crickets and Sean to another large splinter in his neck. After helping to remove it, Leanne returns to her room and tapes her vent to avoid further cricket invasions, though she spots one more critter which she traps under a cup next to her television. 
In the kitchen, she opens what looks like a can of soup, but instead ends up with a pot of dog food. In the trash, she finds the evidence and learns she is the victim of a cruel prank. This upsets her. Then, Wendy and Olivia return. Leanne serves them some ice cream, not mentioning that it's made of lobster. Wendy wastes no time telling Leanne about another family she knows that would pay her more than the Turners. Leanne refuses, then lets out her frustrations. I didn't know there was anything wrong with the onesie. What? I didn't have to go all that way to get her stupid cake. If she wanted me out of the house, she could have just asked. What are you talking about? The ice cream takes effect on the allergy-prone Olivia as she experiences anaphylactic shock. Wendy frantically searches for her daughter's pen, which falls to the floor. Leanne notes the pen, but refuses to help as she questions Wendy. Who is she, really? Panicking as her daughter struggles to breathe, Wendy admits that Julian hired her to pose as a neighbor, befriend Leanne, and encourage her to leave the Turners. Satisfied, Leanne grabs the pen and injects Olivia, saving her life after nearly ending it. That night, Leanne walks past the seemingly dead cricket next to her TV. As she commits a ritual of self-flagellation, the cricket behind her reanimates. On another rainy day, Dorothy takes Sean to the airport as he's heading out for a work trip. In the kitchen, Leanne opens the first letter she's received at this house. It's a postcard which simply reads, Found you. The doorbell rings and Leanne finds her Uncle George has arrived. She introduces him to the baby. Dorothy returns home and is surprised to meet this stranger, though Dorothy welcomes him once she learns he's family of Leanne's. After introducing himself, George hands her a gift, a carving of a chef in reference to her husband's profession. It's elm, George says, from a very special tree that grows in our field. Dorothy invites George to stay for dinner. As she prepares the meal, she has a call with Sean. He is surprised and concerned to hear about the strange guest. Dorothy is less worried and says she'll speak to Sean later. George leads a quick and quiet prayer before they eat. Dorothy watches as George rudely squeezes all the sauce out of her poultry. George is callous toward Leanne throughout the meal, but says there have been some issues at home and Leanne will be needed there. Dorothy's unhappy to hear this as she is hoping Leanne will stay with them. Then another unexpected guest arrives, Julian. Sean called him from Boston. When Jericho cries, Dorothy goes to check on him, and at George's request, Leanne clears the table, which gives Julian and Uncle George a chance to speak. Julian asks George who he really is. He claims that he's just like Julian. Uncles. It's a greater responsibility than people realize, he says. In the event of tragedy, that's when we step up, take the child under our wing, if we're good people. Julian joins Dorothy upstairs. She is frustrated at George's insinuation that their home isn't good enough for Leanne, and she doesn't want him taking their nanny away. She rejoins George and Leanne downstairs who are preparing to leave for the train, but Dorothy insists they stay the night. As she prepares the couch for George, he tells her that a child's place is with their family. Dorothy responds that Leanne is hardly a child anymore. Then, she visits Leanne and convinces her she needs to stand up to her uncle and tell him she wants to stay with the Turners. And Dorothy has Leanne sign a contract, finally making their arrangement official. In the middle of the night, Julian is awoken by a sound upstairs. He checks the guest room and sees that George is missing. Then he wakes up Dorothy and lets her know that George has gone AWOL. Since the alarm didn't go off, he must still be in the house. Julian suggests they leave, but Dorothy insists she will not be driven out of her home by a stranger. As she searches the home, Dorothy hears Jericho cry and runs to check on him. Somehow, he ended up on the floor, and in the crib, Uncle George has taken his place. Julian wants to kick him out, but Dorothy worries they'll lose Leanne if they do. Instead, they leave him be, but Julian keeps watch over him. The next morning, when George tries to leave with Leanne, she tells him that she wants to stay. Very well then, he says. I'll bring your Aunt May next time. You know you can't say no to her. Before finally leaving, George tells them this is a godless house. When Sean returns, Dorothy informs him she's scheduled a baptism for Jericho at three weeks from Sunday. Before Sean can speak, Dorothy tells him, you're not going to talk me out of it. 
This is the perfect opportunity for everyone to finally meet him and see how perfect he is. In an earlier time, Dorothy sits nearly catatonic in her shower. Natalie hands her a reborn doll, and life slowly returns to her eyes as she cradles the artificial infant. In the present, Natalie helps Dorothy de-stress. During their appointment, Natalie is shocked to learn that Dorothy hired a nanny. They wrap up their appointment, and Dorothy decides not to schedule another appointment for the time being. Kinesiology has been a big help, but she feels she's entering a new phase of self-healing. She leaves for work, and Natalie is shocked again when she hears the sound of a baby in the house. She goes to check on the child, but before she can confirm her suspicions, Leanne throws her to the ground and runs away with Jericho. Natalie unsuccessfully chases after her when Sean finds her and the two sit down to talk. Natalie assumes she was mistaken about what she heard and asks Sean why they hired a nanny for a doll. He explains that Leanne is playing along, but helps around the house with other things. Natalie tells him that things have gone too far, and it's time to wake Dorothy from her delusion. Upstairs, Leanne finds a strand of hair she pulled from Natalie's head. She plays with it and watches Dorothy's latest news report on the epidemic of feral dogs roaming the city. Later, Dorothy lets Sean know she invited Natalie for dinner the following night so they can stay friends even though her services are no longer required. In the basement, Sean runs into Leanne. He tells her about Natalie coming for dinner and warns that if she so much as smells a dirty diaper in this house, it's all over. She agrees to act as a hostess for the night to help ensure Natalie stays in the dark about the baby. Before dinner, Sean and Julian meet in the basement. The two pool whatever cash they were able to collect without suspicion. 20 grand from Julian and a disappointing eight from Sean. They hope this will be enough to fund the payoff that Julian assumes Leanne's Uncle George is looking for. Once Natalie arrives, they sit down for a meal of haggis, tatties, and neeps. She is surprised to see Dorothy, having shown no religious proclivities in the past, say grace before the meal. When Leanne heads to the basement to grab some wine, she is interrupted by a spontaneous cracking in the basement floor. Meanwhile, in the nursery, Sean stops Dorothy from bringing the baby downstairs. Neither of them notice the feral dog hiding in the room with their child. Outside, Natalie approaches Leanne and asks her how much Sean and Julian told her about what happened. I was the one they called, Natalie says. She was the one who showed the two frightened men what to do. What did they do? Leanne asks. However, Julian finds them and interrupts. After washing up, Natalie hears a noise from the nursery. Inside, she finally sees the living child before getting chased out by the feral dog. She runs downstairs and Julian prepares to attack with a bottle. Leanne hears the beating from the kitchen and walks out to see the dog now lying still on the floor. They call animal control and Julian speaks with Natalie outside. He tells her the baby is Leanne's, and she needs help raising it. Sean and Dottie are thinking of making a proper home for it, going through all the legal steps involved, of course. Julian admits that Dorothy believes the baby is Jericho. Natalie is concerned for Dorothy, but Julian points out she's not the only one who needs help. After the show of vulnerability, the two grow close, and she goes home with Julian. Though first, the feral dog springs back to life and runs off. Three days later, the Turners head out for a television awards show while Toby takes Leanne on what he insists is not a date. This leaves Julian with the job of babysitting that night. However, once alone in the house, Julian visits the crib and in it, he finds a reborn doll. He frantically and fruitlessly searches for the living child. He calls Roscoe, who is spying on Leanne and Toby, confirming the baby isn't with them. He calls Sean, but doesn't get a chance to explain anything before Dorothy interrupts. After the unhelpful phone calls, Julian and Dorothy's father arrives unannounced. He is concerned after receiving an invite to Jericho's baptism. He isn't thrilled with the idea of, as he says, parading that sack of cloth in a church. Over a glass of wine, Julian's father shows him a photo of a baby that resembles Jericho. For a fee, they could have him, and allow the child to assume the role of Dorothy's son, replacing the doll. Julian admits they've considered similar ideas, and he'll run it by Sean. Then, his father takes off. Outside, Toby walks Leanne home. When she leans in for a kiss, 
He dodges. She leaves dejected as Toby stammers an apology. Inside, Leanne picks up the doll from where Julian threw it. She once again treats it as though it were the real Jericho. Julian demands to know where the real baby is. She ignores him as she changes the doll's diaper. He persists and she continues to ignore him. He demands to know, when Dorothy arrives in under an hour, what will she find in the crib? Jericho, she replies. He demands to know where Jericho is now, and she tells him he's in the crib. Then she asks him a question. What did you find, Julian? When you came to check on them, what did you see? He offers her money in exchange for the child. As she ignores his pleas, he increases the offer to eventually reach his ceiling of 100 grand. She thanks him for babysitting and assures that she can take it from here. At his wit's end, Julian grabs a doll and holds it over the balcony, threatening to drop it. He counts down from five, and when he gets nothing out of Leanne, he drops the doll. Just as he hears a baby cry out, he quickly catches it and figures the baby must be in the house somewhere. He heard it, but he still finds nothing. He makes noise banging on a kitchen pot, calling for the baby, but he receives no answer. Leanne had asked him what he found. He remembers banging on the door and the window, but getting no answer. He remembers rotting meat on the kitchen table and flies. What else did he find? He calls out for the baby and eventually gives up. Upstairs, he finds Leanne praying and confesses to her. I was the first one here, he begins. Sean and Dorothy arrive. The doll has been replaced by the flesh and blood child. In the kitchen, Julian tells Sean that Leanne now knows everything. Upstairs, Dorothy asks Leanne to help take off her pearl necklace. Dorothy asks about Leanne's date with Toby, and she says he doesn't like her in that way. Leanne tells Dorothy she was wrong, and lets the necklace fly off her neck. Leanne watches Dorothy struggle to collect the pearls as she quietly picks one up and swallows it. Through an 11-hour labor, Dorothy gives birth to Jericho naturally and in their own home. Sean keeps the placenta in their freezer. After several weeks, he leaves on a work trip and Dorothy cares for their child. Over a video call, Dorothy laments the hot weather and having to care for Jericho alone. Sean suggests Julian step in for a change, but Dorothy suspects he's using again. One morning, on a particularly hot day, Dorothy dresses Jericho in a yellow onesie. They go shopping, and she returns home with a trunk of groceries and her baby in the back seat. She puts the groceries away. She uses the bathroom, and the wind closes the front door for her. Dorothy plugs in a fan to cool the nursery and the empty crib within it. It's a hot day. The thermometer by the car shows 110 degrees Fahrenheit. She lies on the couch and hears silence on the baby monitor. Upstairs, she checks on the empty crib. Early one morning, Dorothy is woken by her car alarm. Leanne sits at the foot of her bed and lets her know the alarm has been going for 30 minutes. Dorothy shuts it off and the two of them notice she is fertile again. In the kitchen, Leanne cooks Mrs. Turner some breakfast as Sean returns from the fish market. He helps her put the finishing touches on the omelet. Before Leanne goes, he tells her, It wasn't a crime. Police said it happens more than you think, 40 times a year. It can happen to anyone. She leaves to deliver Mrs. Turner her breakfast. Leanne finds her trying on a bathing suit. Today's news report involves a pool, and the producers want her in the water. However, Leanne hurts Dorothy's self-esteem with a backhanded compliment. Everyone knows you've just given birth. They'll be expecting you to be carrying a little extra baby weight. Dorothy runs past Sean to the car and smells the fish he's preparing for delivery, then vomits inside the windshield. Sean helps her inside and suggests she is sick from something she ate, as he eyes the breakfast Leanne prepared. Then he collects a sample of the egg white omelet and freezes it next to Jericho's placenta. On that hot day, months ago, Dorothy leaves the empty crib and takes her child out of the car. She bathes with it. She places it in the crib. She carries it with her as she lets the delivery men into the house. They place a large hunk of meat on her table. Days pass and the meat rots. Dorothy hears Jericho cry on the monitor. Upstairs, she finds him motionless in the crib, though the sound of his crying and her soothing him continue to play on the monitor. Dorothy looks at her son. She drops the monitor, and her body shakes violently.
Sean is expecting her to pick him up at the airport, but she ignores his messages. On a rainy day, Julian came to the Turner home and knocked on the door and the window, but got no answer. He found rotting meat on the kitchen table and flies. Upstairs, he found more flies. After another tasting for Sean, Leanne asks him, why did you stay with her after what she did? Because it was an accident, Sean explains. It was a mistake and people make mistakes, Leanne. She stayed with him for four days, just the two of them, waiting for me to come home and help. If I'd been here, none of that would have happened. That was my mistake. Upstairs, Dorothy holds her child before Leanne snatches him away, telling Dorothy she's been sick. You don't want Jericho catching your bug, she says. Do what's best for the baby. Dorothy leaves Leanne with her child. One morning, Sean bakes Jericho's placenta into some croquembouche. Later, Leanne and Toby prepare the house for Jericho's post-baptism reception. Sean, Dorothy, and the many other guests arrive. While entertaining the guests, Dorothy notices a little girl with a doll. Suddenly, the party is interrupted by Amber alerts from everyone's phones. Later, Dorothy meets the little girl and holds her doll, Pamela. For a moment, she recalls holding her reborn doll, then drops Pamela. Downstairs, Toby serves Jericho's croquembouche to the guests. Dorothy's work rival, Isabel, thoroughly enjoys them. Meanwhile, Leanne searches for Jericho, finding him with her Aunt May upstairs. May cryptically asks her niece what happened and what did she do. Leanne explains that it was an accident and not his time to go. May disagrees. God had a path for that woman. He wanted her to suffer. But you thought you knew better. May tells Leanne the house is changing her and she wonders what they've done to her little flower. Then Dorothy finds them and takes Jericho but first notes how familiar the woman looks. Then, May tells Leanne to come home and that when Dorothy wakes tomorrow, Jericho will be gone. Things will be as they were meant to be. You're our servant, May reminds her, not hers. In the basement, her uncle George finds Sean. Sean offers him 86 grand to leave them alone. He turns it down. Do you know who you welcomed into your home, Sean? George asks. He explains to Sean that after the fire, it was easier to let everyone believe they lost Leanne. So George and May brought her to Pennsylvania and raised her. Leanne never stopped talking about Dorothy since the day they met. She thought she was so pretty and watched her on TV every night. He goes on, Leanne likes to please the people she loves and hurt the people she doesn't. When Sean wonders who the child is, George insists that he already knows the answer. Then George asks Sean what Leanne has done to him. He lists the ailments, splinters, and a loss of taste. Finally, George tells Sean to ask for what he wants, and he does. I want him to stay, Sean says. Jerick. I want my son back. At the reception, Dorothy's father gives a toast to the journey Sean and Dorothy have begun. The proceedings are interrupted by the arrival of police officers. They were given Mrs. Turner's name and address in connection with a missing child. They reunite Hannah, the girl with the doll, and subject of the earlier Amber Alert, with her mother. After the cops leave, Sean is disturbed to learn he suddenly cannot feel anything. She's doing this to me. He pleads with Julian. Julian quiets him. Don't let that crazy get inside your head. As the winds of a powerful storm begin, Sean tells Julian that he prayed for Jericho to return. He now believes the baby they've been caring for is truly his son. Julian leaves and Roscoe keeps watch. Outside, Roscoe finds Leanne's Aunt May staring at him. He gets out of the car and doesn't see George standing behind him. Later, as Toby leaves the house, he finds Roscoe's car abandoned. Dorothy, staring at the cross around her neck, suddenly remembers something. She grabs a DVD and watches an old news report of hers, a standoff between ATF agents and the Church of the Lesser Saints. The leader of this cult was May Markham, Leanne's supposed aunt. Dorothy goes to Leanne's room, but she has already left the house with her suitcase and a balloon. Then she runs to the nursery and for a moment recalls someone in a hazmat suit 
removing something from the crib. In the kitchen, Sean tests the extent of his sudden loss of feeling and watches as his hand burns above the stove. The standoff between ATF agents and the Church of the Lesser Saints comes to a head as smoke pours out of the building. The agents move in and there is an explosion, followed by gunshots. Outside, Leanne walks down the street to a group waiting for her. They watch as she approaches her aunt and uncle. They all hug and huddle together. A police officer notices the impromptu gathering, but when he returns for a second look, they are all gone. Inside the house, Dorothy reaches into Jericho's crib and picks up a doll. And that's where season one wraps up. Let me know your favorite parts in the comments, what you're looking forward to in season two, and any theories you have on where this is all heading. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to keep up with our episode by episode coverage in season two. Thanks for watching and see you on the next One Take.